in John 4, he's sitting on the well. And he's waiting for her. And when she comes, he says, give me something to drink. Because she has a water problem. She's looking for something to quench her thirst. And he says, your problem is the water. And it's also your sister. And so he sits on top of her well or on top of her sister. He says, you keep drawing water from the wrong place. And what you're looking for won't allow you to get the water you're really desiring to have. And he sits on the well. Say this with me, say water problems. Water problems. Yeah, water problems. And so he, he, he does it in John 4, and it's, also, it's as if John just forgets about it, he goes on. And then the very next chapter, John says he goes to a place by a pool. And they think the angel is going to come down. And this man has an infirmity for 38 years. I, this is where my heart is broken because I know how, how it feels to be in something for a long time. I know you can be broken for a long time and it be silent and you can't articulate it and your life can be filled with regrets. I know what it's like to look back at your life and say I wasted years. I know what it's like to get in relationships and say what in the world was I thinking about? <laughs> I, I know what it's like to close the door on great opportunities. I know what it's like to lose. I know what it's like to lose again. I know what it's like to lose so much. Lord Jesus, your life seems like it's a loss. He has been like this for 38 years. Laying on a mat, hoping somebody could carry his bed. And, and great leadership, leadership that can communicate the word effectively, that can teach the word effectively. change your system. Now, when he's saying this, when he's saying this to this man who's been in his authority for 30 years, when he's saying this, he, he's done something that John 4 tells us. He's, he's done something. He's, did, he's done something with the water. He's changed the boundaries. He says in Job, he says, where were you when I told the ocean to stand right there? He said, I set the boundaries for the water. He said, where were you when I did that? Well, what is the man saying? The man is saying, because I have the infirmity, I can't get to the water. And Jesus says, guess what? I can bring the water to you. Cross water. He says, you can't get to it, but I can bring it to you. I can change the boundaries of the water that the water you're trying to get into will overflow its banks and come your way. I love a God who says, you're looking at it all wrong. You're trying to get into something I'm trying to bring to you. Because God will send you stuff, and if you're not perceptive of what God has sent you, you will miss the flow. And that's why Jesus said, do you want it? And the man says, I have nobody to put me in the pool. His response was his system, and God had changed the boundaries of water. Water was now coming his way. As a matter of fact, the water of life was standing right in front of him. The God of the universe who made water, who breathed into us the breath of life. When he breathed into Adam, he became a living nephew. It does mean soul, but it meant that everything inside of him, blood and water, started to flow from the breath of God. Water came out of God's breath. And that water is standing there and says, do you want to be made well? And he says, my sister. My sister won't let me be. My system will not let me receive what you want to give me because you're bringing it to me in a way I never thought it would come. You're giving it to me in a way that I never could think that it would come this way. You mean the water has come to me. Took up his bed and walked. Look at the next verse. It says, now a certain man who was there who had an infirmity 38 years, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up and while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Look at the next verse. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. 
He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. The man who was healed by Jesus didn't even know who Jesus was. That's in your Bible, that's in your text, you read those verses down. They didn't even know who Jesus was. So Jesus healed the man who didn't ask to be healed. He healed the man who was not born again. He healed the man who didn't even know his name. And we're always encouraged by that because if you would heal somebody who don't even know you, I know you'll heal somebody who does know you. This man doesn't even know his name, but yet Jesus goes to him and heals him. I love the text that it said that he knew this man had been in that condition a long time. This man has had his sickness for 38 years. Jesus dies at 33 and a half. That means that Jesus knew this man before he wrapped himself in flesh. Oh, isn't that good stuff? That before Jesus left heaven, he knew he would heal that man when he was born a baby. Isn't that something? He knew once I wrapped myself in flesh and lived for 30 years and started preaching and teaching, the man who's praying to me now, I will heal him later. Soon as I wrap myself in flesh, I'm going to pull him out of his water problem because he not only has a water problem, he also has a bad water system. And when we talk about leadership, leaders change systems. Because some systems don't always work. And when you've had a problem for 38 years, if it's not working, come on, say this with me. Say, change it. Change it. Yeah, you have to change it. Don't be arrogant. Don't be crazy. If you let it approve for 38 years and you haven't been healed, you have to go ahead and receive some change. Because if I have a water problem and the system I have is not getting me into the water, then not only do I have a water problem, but I have a bad system. And if you don't change my system, I'll never get my water. So I need somebody to show up and change my system so I can get my water. Yeah. And Jesus says, I'm not only going to give you the water. He says, I'm going to change your system because I don't care what people tell you. Gospel is just not faith without God.
I usually mean four. Uh, look at look at John. Look at look at John five. I meant three this time. Amen. <laughs> John five verse three. John five verse three. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Waiting for the move. This is not a mistake. God doesn't make coincidences. This is this is not in the Hebrew. Coincidence is not even there. It's it's just not there. If John four talks about Jesus meeting a woman at the well, and John five talks about Jesus going to see a man at a pool, that can't be a mistake. Because the book of John not only focuses on Jesus being God, he focuses on Jesus being the Word of Life. Oh, that's good. That can quench your thirst. And once you have a drink, you'll never thirst again. John is the only one who says this. He's the only one who has Jesus saying, come unto me and drink, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. No other gospel has that but the book of John, because John focuses on Jesus being the water of life. He talks about him being the bread of life. He talks about him being God Almighty. But there is no gospel. As a matter of fact, there's no book that talks about God being the water of life more than the book of John. And this is why the only gospel has him at a whale talking to a woman.